So hi guys, this is another installment of Jiu Jitsu Stories. I'm joined here by Martin Gugi. We are in uh, Skradin. We just ended the uh, uh, Skradin uh, Jiu Jitsu camp that we do every year. This has been the sixth, uh, uh, the sixth year, uh, the sixth consecutive year. So uh, take it away, Professor. Yeah. Um, first of all, it was an honor to be here in the camp. It was great to teach next to the other guys. Thanks, Professor Carlos Maya, who invited me. And yeah, I come from Austria. Um, I trained Jiu Jitsu now for I think over 15 years and I'm still learning so I think Jiu Jitsu is a great way to always be a child, right? To always keep playing, always keep improving, find out new ways to solve problems. And that's what I like about Jiu Jitsu. Um, so my, my Jiu Jitsu lineage is I, I come from Austria and when I started it was hard to find any teacher. So basically it was traveling around, traveling to London, Prague different places to train and then I found a guy in Germany because my name is uh, Michael Hockeyos and I started to train there and his teacher was Senato Miglaccio and then I ended up training with him in California I moved there for a year for training and yeah that's how I got in touch with him Senato is black belt on the high and crazy so my lineage is from high and crazy over Senato Miglaccio, Michael Hockeyos and then to me and now I run a school in Frankfurt mm -hmm. And together with Professor Natu, we run some Jiu Jitsu camps. They're called Pitcher Intensive Camps, and we are trying to help people, of course, to take, get more technical, but also if they want to make a school, make a living out of Jiu Jitsu, to help them to get a curriculum, to make instructor courses, sales courses. Because the problem is like this um, like the techniques are, you can get a lot of good instructors right now. Mm -hmm. okay, also in Europe, they are getting more and more good instructors. But the problem is, one day you call a black belt but you are still a white belt in business. So we are trying to help there because it's a different way. I know some black belts think that because they're good on the mats, they're good everywhere. It's not true. We are good teachers, hopefully, and they're good in technical ways. But on the other field of life, we are still white belts. Mm -hmm. But if you want to go to school, you need more than black belts. Okay? I think some people who did a little business have more knowledge, they know much more about us. I think it's not important if you are a world champion, it can help. But it's not that important if you want to go to school. But uh, yeah, you have to have a different focus. Building up a school than becoming world champion. And I think that a lot of people are mixing this up. Mm -hmm. So what, what would you what would you say to the people that are trying to set up a business? What would be the most important thing that you in your experience that uh, one must do or one must fulfill to be a successful teacher, to have be a successful business owner because the the two things are not really identical. Um, first of all um, I think everybody starts Jiu-Jitsu because we like to train. Yes. Definitely. Okay, so when we like to train, we want to keep training and for training we need training partners. One day you realize, man, I spend so much time there on the mats that my wife taking time away from my family, taking time away from my wife. So it should be a, some, should, should get out something from training. Okay, because one day my first teacher in karate, he told me, Martin, when you train, and you come home after every night, you cannot tell your family, I was just a great night, I was training, you have to bring him home some money. And the thing, this is, you have to decide for yourself, I want to make a business out of it. It's good that we like it, it's our passion, but if you want to make more and to keep training, I think it's a, it's a business. Um, think about it, who is in, who is training Jiu Jitsu after 10 years? It's mainly the people who are teaching, or are they running a school? Yeah, okay, yeah. The other guys, sooner or later will stop. Definitely. If we will keep training, keep training, uh, staying in Jiu-Jitsu, we need to have a school. Or we need to be part of a school, part of a school team. And that's what I, my teacher, Renato, he helped me a lot with this because he's much more into it. And I think first this is important, you not, you don't need a black belt. Okay, what you need is, you need the passion to start a school. Okay. The problem is, like my problem was all the time, I'm a teacher, so I'm a full-time teacher for sports and religion, and Jiu-Jitsu was my second job. So if you have two ways to go, you're not uh, staying 100% on one way. And that's why it's not going that fast. If you have to make it happen, you will find a way. So uh, if you want to grow a business in Jiu-Jitsu, then you can find a way. But you don't need only technique, you need uh, instructor courses, you need sales courses, you need how to uh, get, make good in marketing, Facebook, Instagram. I think this is more important than the technique itself. Okay, in the end, you have to keep training, but on the other side, you have to educate yourself in different fields. 
two. And when you have all this, you have instructor courses, sales courses, then in the end, it's like personal development. Mm -hmm. You have to grow as a person. Because what well, if you see now, if you're a black belt, but you're not a nice person, people yeah. will stay in this room. Yes. It's more important that you know yourself, that you know about your character, that you can guide people, you're charismatic. If you're this, then people will stay in this room. If you're a great technical guy, but nobody likes you, okay, you're alone. Yes, yes, nobody will pay to come to train with a big bag. Yes, I agree. So, uh, the, the focus of the business when you start it should definitely be on white belts rather than. See you guys. See you guys. Thank you. Uh, uh, should be rather be on white belts and people that are only starting off than to all jump all of a sudden in, into competition and the competition training yeah. and start building competitors. Good question. Right? Yes, you have to decide because uh, if you want to keep people up, you have a training group but you're not growing. If you want to go as a school, you need beginner classes. Beginners want to train these beginners. Like in Brazil, they were always training together, white to black belts. And sometimes it was hard to get new people. Now we are here, we're trying to make a business. We have to make courses for beginners. We have to make courses for self-defense and jiu-jitsu. Then later on, on jiu-jitsu, perhaps some people in some areas, they like MMA a lot, then it would be MMA and jiu-jitsu or nogi. And so you can get them to train more jiu-jitsu. But you need beginner courses. Otherwise, the school will not work. Definitely, definitely. Is there any, uh, do you have like a, a, an example of when you had to use jiu-jitsu in real life, uh, like a self-defense situation, or did something that you learned from jiu-jitsu help you to evade some problems outside or, you know, like just some, just something of, you know, like... Um, first, there's, everybody says that jiu-jitsu is, you can translate jiu-jitsu to life. I think you can translate it for any hobby or any sport you have, but in jiu-jitsu is a little more, a different why because the self-discipline is in you know, martial arts is much more than in soccer, for example. But I think if you see sports in a different way, every sport can be related to life. In Jiu-Jitsu, of course, because of martial arts, because of our history from samurai or whatever it is, we are, we are not only uh, teaching techniques, we teach more. And I think that this is what I like, like when you go to a camp and you get nice techniques, that's perfect. But you, if, you, if you learn more, about yourself, then it's a great camp, it's a perfect camp. Yes. And of course, uh, I think that it's also our job, okay, I think it's also a job to help people, but it's not because I have a black belt to help people, because it's my desire to help people, okay, and the thing, great teachers are great technical guys, but the guy who is more is the guy who has the passion, but it doesn't have to be with Jiu-Jitsu, can be different Yes. Yes, just so he's, too. just so he's a good person, you know, yes. and he tries to teach you the, the best he the best he can. Yes, I, I agree with this. I, I'm a teacher and I see that in high school, like 20% is what you teach, 80% is personality. And this tells you the whole story. If you're not drawing as a person, you're not, you cannot guide people. So you have to draw as a person. Okay. Draw as persons. Good advice from our black belt. Thank you, professor, for everything. Pleasure. This guy is a legit beast. He uses techniques which are borderline magic. So I don't think this this is completely legal in the world, you know. But thank you for the role. Thank you for everything. We'll get there. And we'll get there. Thank you. See you guys next time in Jiu Jitsu Stories.